Hello everyone, this is David again. I wanted to go ahead and share a quick little tutorial that I think is you know really fun to do and I hope you enjoy it. So what I'm showing you right now is a stone that I made with my daughter. Uh, we just spent some time on this just over the weekend and as you can tell there's a lot of um, really kind of cool things going on here. Some sparkles and some various shades and everything and I wanted to share with you a, a quick way to make a stone whatever shape or size you're looking for in Illustrator so we'll go ahead and get started I'll start with a new document and we're just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do a, a round kind of stone like that and we're gonna go ahead and I like to center my objects to my artboards and then we're gonna just get in here and this is not a perfection type of um, project but you can you can do this very specifically and very uh, deliberately uh, for the types of angles and um, you know the gradients you use and all that but this is more just a general rundown of how you do it and you can just take it from there and see how you like it um, so first I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this object uh, by Command-C and then co Command-F is going to land that copy right on top of that uh, exact same spot. So I'm going to just go ahead and take that and I'll hold down my Option-Shift and kind of bring this in. And I kind of want to make that second area. So this will be more like the flat area and this will be kind of like the bevel of the stone. Uh, so the next thing I want to do is uh, figure out what color I want to make this. So right off to the side here, I'm going to go ahead and pick out some gradients. So first thing I'm going to do is not go to my gradients panel, but I'm going to go to my, uh, let's see here, it's going to be in my swatches, which I don't see there. So find your swatch palette. And then in your swatch palette, you have this little menu button right here in the top right hand corner. In here, you want to just go ahead and scroll down until you hit open swatch library. So open up your entire library of swatches. I'm just going to go into my gradients, and then we even have a gems and jewels uh, gradient swatch. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that, make this a little bit easier. Uh, you can co totally customize your own gradients depending on what you want to do. I'm just going to go ahead and uh, work with this. Uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab a couple of different gradients by just holding Alt and Shift, copies over that, and I'm just going to pick a few colors that I like that go together nicely, and then uh, I think four should be good enough, you know, within the same family. Uh, so the darker ones are going to probably be more for shadowing. Um, just to kind of define the areas as you can you'll see as we move forward so the first thing I like to do is go ahead and get some lines in here and get a vertical and a horizontal that way you know if I want I can make this pretty specific lining it up to my middle object here by using my horizontal and vertical line tool and then I'm gonna go ahead from here and start kind of uh, getting random with my lines. Just by grabbing my pen tool, I'm just going to go here and just start making uh, straight vector lines. Uh, you can put throw a curve in there, as you can tell, there's a little curve in there. Uh, there's no rules to this. Uh, this is more just to give you an idea of what you can accomplish. So, again, just throwing in some lines here and there, uh, nothing too specific. How you can even keep that same stroke going through the whole thing if you like, and just randomize. The next thing you want to do is then start picking a point you want to go from and start lining up new strokes to the points inside the drawing. Uh, this should be fairly simple. If you have a few lines, you just go ahead and click through them. Holding down the Alt key 
uh, releases your pen tool so you can click off of it and just uh, pick up at a new spot and just uh, you know keep going through it and you know nothing nothing too specific just kind of having fun with it um, you know we're just gonna keep working on that um, add a few more lines and let's see let's just get another one through here uh, that out here okay all right now that we got all of our crazy lines going on we can just go ahead and highlight the entire selection then you want to go over to your uh, Pathfinder tool, which is right here for me, and you want to go ahead and use the Divide option. You're going to click on that. Uh, what, it, what it just did was, and I'll show you by zooming in here, it basically made every shape inside of your, um, your gemstone here uh, individual shape. So if we go ahead and ungroup, we can go ahead and click on that shape and all the other shapes in between. Each shape is individual, unique, and its own. So with that in mind, you can go through, you can do this very meticulously and pick out which ones you really want to have, or what I like to do is um, just kind of go through and pick out a few just by randomly selecting using my lasso tool and then applying my stroke I'm sorry my gradient and then I'll just go back again select a few others again nothing too specific and just keep selecting those gradients um, looks like I might have a little too much of this so I'm just gonna go in there and grab and select a different gradient and go through here, grab these out. And really that's all you need to do is just grab them all until you have them all selected. And it's a pretty pretty standard process right now. It's like just click what you want, uh, select what you want, uh, go through it. You know, you can do this one at a time. Uh, what I did with my daughter was that we picked we picked them out individually. And we kind of just went like in a clockwork pattern around trying to pick and randomize as much of them as we could to make them all look pretty unique. So either way you want to do it, it's totally up to you. Uh, just giving you some ideas of what you can do. Um, we'll go ahead and pick a few more colors here. Let's see. And then we can just kind of Dive, oops, dive in here and select the kind of last few remaining shapes in this. A little bit here and there. And I'm showing you the whole process rather than just kind of skipping around. Because, you know, when I'm making these tutorials, I kind of come across um, things that I might not, you know, totally be aware of. Like, oh, hey, what happened here? Uh, let's just go ahead and realign that. Drop that where it's supposed to be. And we can go ahead and select this, 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 this. And let's give that a gradient. Select that again. And that's all I'm doing is just selecting and moving on to the next shape. Looks like I have a little bit of a shape here that moved around as well. So I'll just pop that right back into place. Um, if you can't tell where something goes, it's pretty, pretty easy with... Um, going into outline mode, which is uh, command Y, just in and out there. Um, you see it's like, oh, hey, you know, this thing got moved. 
this is where it goes and well, using your smart guides will really help you and you can use those by going into your view and then going to your uh, smart guides which is Apple U for uh, the fast key or shortcut key so let's go back out and looks like we just got a couple more in here so once I have all of these done, I'm going to show you what we can do next to really make these look uh, pretty great and give them a nice uh, background shape and gradient to really, uh, you know, put put the whole thing together. And I think, yeah, there's one more. And you may see me like moving around and um, using other uh, gradients, but it's all basically it's the same stuff. I'm just grabbing it over here rather than off of here. This is good to have reference, uh, but if for any reason you can't use it, feel free to use your gradients. There's no rules based on that. Um, I'm just I'm just gonna select a different color there. This is too much going on too much blue in one section but okay it kind of looks like a shattered window or, or stained glass window a little bit um, okay so if you go to your outline mode again you'll see you'll have like some shapes left over just go through and just delete those until you have your uh, full rounded shape in this area just go through and clean it up uh, select all. Looks like I see a node here. I'm going to delete that. Uh, y again and select all. And just see what's going on around here. Just making sure there's nothing else. Okay. So now we got our, our stone. Now we want to give it some character. Uh, first of all, I'm going to get rid of our, our black stroke uh, for this because uh, it's not really enhancing the drawing. It's, I think it takes away from it. It uh, gives our gem a little bit more of a real gem look. So now I'm, I'm just grouping it together, making sure that I'm not going to, when I move it around, it's not going to change up or anything. Now we're going to go in and give this uh, some nice uh, sparkles. Uh, easy tool to use, just go ahead and go to your shape tool, uh, rectangle, and go down to the very last one, the flare tool. No need to go through and edit it although you can that's not out of the question I like uh, I kind of like the way it comes out so we'll just run with that for now and I've had another piece of mine got moved around here again that must have happened when I was moving it around I'm just gonna fix that real quick yeah Oh, looks like we missed one here. Done. Okay. Back to our flare tool. All you really need to do is find a spot where you really want to make that flare and just go ahead and pull it out and you can start seeing your little rays come out. And there is your flare. Now, your second click when you're using your flare tool kind of gives you this, um, don't know the exact term for it, but it's like a uh, lens flare as well. I think that's what this whole thing is called. It's called the flare tool, but this is more like a lens flare effect. You don't have to do that. You can keep the flare just the way it is and, you know, nothing... Nothing wrong with doing that. If you want the other flare, feel free to use it. Um, obviously, you don't want to make your gemstone too uh, too crazy looking. But, I mean, it's all up to you. I mean, I like it. I mean, sometimes the lens flare is good to use. Sometimes it's just a little obnoxious. But it's just what you want. So, again, I'm just going to... Click off of that. Control. 
just make put that right there and a new flare like over here and maybe one here okay I think that's enough for what we're aiming for so we got ourselves a nice uh, uh, shimmery stone uh, to really make this uh, complete I like to give it a background um, kind of give it like a floating um, look to it so we just drop that to the background here you can see some of our flares right there I like to keep our backgrounds darker uh, so we can see what's going on so I'm just gonna make sure you have your gradient selected so when you're working with your gradients Right now you'll see like a little circle with a line through it on my tool up here and I cannot adjust anything doing that. I have to have the gradient selected down here and then I have full control of what I want. Oh, kind of like that little offset. Yeah, I'll give it, give it kind of like this magical look to it. And there we have it. Our stone is, I mean, to my standards, it's complete. Um, again, you can really go into really great detail on this. Let me show you another example of what you can do. Uh, open recent. This is a shape I had been working on. And it is, you know, it's coming together. I'm slowly working on it. But you can see the stages that I go through here, here. And even here, so this is a pretty precise geometric drawing of a kind of a diamond cut. And I'm just taking my time working through all the different phases of it. And this is what my final result's going to kind of end up being or looking like. But the great thing about this is that everything's editable. I can change it, change whatever I want. I can remove this or the background. It doesn't really matter. I mean, once you have the shape, you can do whatever you want. So I'm glad you guys uh, decided to spend a little bit of time with me learning this. It's a really cool trick, tool to learn, and it can really help you in the jam if you're in need of gems or stones of some sort. And uh, again, I hope this is helpful. If you have any questions for me, leave a comment below or feel free to uh, shoot me an email. Again, thank you, and uh, we'll talk soon.